the Labour government's first budget just increased taxes by £40 billion. But the question is, who's going to pay them? Landlords and investors have been worried ever since Labour came into power, and the rumours about rent controls and capital gains tax haven't helped to calm them down. So the team and I dug into the budget to work out how it'll affect the property market and what the biggest changes will be, and most importantly, how much of that 40 billion landlords will need to cough up. About 45 minutes into the budget, most of the big announcements seem to have been made with property investors left in the clear. And then came the shock announcement. Investors would need to pay another 2% extra stamp duty when buying a property in England. The Chancellor said in her speech that it was a tax on second homes, which makes it sound like the burden will fall on people with an extra place for weekend getaways. But no, it affects all investment purchases by companies and by individuals who already own at least one other property, including their home. Investors already paid a rate of stamp duty 3% higher than owner occupiers. So the extra 2% means that they're now paying 5% extra. On a £250,000 home, which is pretty typical for an investor kind of buy, that means an extra £5,000 in tax. This came into effect immediately. So if you're in the middle of buying a property, unless you'd exchanged by the end of budget day, you're stuck with paying the extra tax. So is this just the beginning of a fresh war against landlords? I don't think so. Because they'd already committed to not touching the big taxes, income tax, VAT, and so on, they were left scrambling to raise a bit extra from wherever they could. But this extra stamp duty is not just free money for the government. The increase will have an effect on the property market. If investors are put off by this extra tax and decide not to buy at all, it means fewer homes will be built and there won't be as many rental properties as there could have been. Given that there are 21 people currently chasing every rental property, that's not ideal. But for the investors who remain, does this fundamentally change the case for property? I don't think so. In fact, in a year's time, it seems to me that we won't even be thinking about it anymore. Because we've been here before. The concept of investors paying more stamp duty than owner-occupiers goes back to 2016, when the 3% surcharge was introduced. We all moaned and griped about it for a while, but then we built it into our figures. And if the numbers still worked, no problem. Now, it's just a fact of life that no one really thinks about. In Scotland, the extra amount that investors have to pay is 6%, and life still goes on. So if you have a purchase currently going through, it's very annoying. For everyone else, it certainly feels unfair and it's probably counterproductive for the property market as a whole, but it's not a game changer. By the way, if you want to stay up to date with how this does end up affecting the property market, you can sign up to our Property Pulse newsletter where we update you weekly on the most important property news. There's a link in the description. But something else had been rumoured extensively in the run-up to the budget, which could have had even bigger consequences. Property investors hate capital gains tax, and there were nasty rumours swirling around that it could go as high as 40%. For investors, investors who've been holding onto a property for a long time, that could have meant tens of thousands of pounds in extra tax. Some people even accelerated their plans to sell to make sure it was all done before the budget. So it was a real surprise when Rachel Reeves said that capital gains tax would be going up, but not on property. The thing is, in 2016, the rates of capital gains tax on everything other than property were cut, leaving property investors paying more than anyone else. Now, everything else has been increased to bring it back into line. So now, the higher rate of capital gains tax on property and non-property assets is 24%. That's a far cry from the predictions of it going to 40%. So far from being a war on landlords, has the Chancellor actually warmed to us? Well, no. I think it's because a dramatic increase would probably have raised less tax as owners decide to hold on and wait for another government to come in and bring the rate down again. In other words, it would have deterred landlords from potentially selling up and freeing up homes for owner-occupiers. So it's a sensible move, but a surprising one all the same. But hang on, if that extra 40 billion isn't coming from capital gains tax, where is it coming from? Well, the answer is pretty much increased national insurance payments for employers. What sounds like a small increase of 1.2% and a lowering of threshold translates into an extra £23.7 billion in tax every year. Compare this to the increase in stamp duty, which isn't expected to raise more than 310 million in any single year. A national insurance increase dwarfs the impact of everything else per together. But that didn't stop the Chancellor scrambling around down the back of the fiscal sofa trying to find other bits of extra cash. And an obvious place to look was inheritance tax. Property investors are often building their portfolios with one eye on legacy. They want assets to pass down to their children. So 
inheritance tax is always another touchy topic and the pre-budget rumors were not looking good. But for property investors specifically, there was no bad news. The only effect was the freezing of the tax-free band for an extra two years, which will mean higher tax bills due to inflation. It's pretty small stuff though, and other types of investors had it much worse, with inheritance tax reliefs being removed or chipped away at for pensions, unlisted shares, agricultural property, and more. But beyond the tax grab, what about other budget promises when it came to property? Well, there was a repeat of the promise to hire thousands of new planning offices to clear the backlog and make it easier to get things built. And there was an extra 500 million to build more affordable housing, but nothing that seems likely to move the property market in any meaningful way. And all in all, even though investors will be annoyed by the extra stamp duty, especially if they have a purchase going through now, the budget was less dramatic than many had feared. But there is no doubt that the combined impact of various tax changes and regulations have made property investing harder over recent years. So it's more important than ever to buy in the right places because otherwise the numbers won't stack up. So check out this video next where I reveal the safest places to buy in the UK.